and so tell me why are you so keen on becoming a civil servant what is the condition now for status of manjiga in uttarakhand can you please tell me on what ground the governor has reserved the bill how deep this problem is and what is its socio cultural impact on the society of uttarakhand anshul earlier in the discussion you talked about literacy uh, what is the current literacy rate of india yes come in so my humble pranam to the honorable board please be seated thank you sir please give a brief introduction about yourself so my name is anshul pat and i hail from devbhumi uttarakhand and i graduated from st stephen's college wherein i was the elected student representative for three continuous years and i was also the president of hindi sahitya sabha vice president of the jci society and i have been associated with various other programs uh, one such program was the mansingh link speech school that was established by his holiness the dalai lama uh, then my hobbies include i like to swim i love graphic designing and i'm a bit into rock climbing Mm, I also am also fond of reading books. So that this is all about. Okay, and so tell me why are you so keen on becoming a civil servant? Why do you want to pursue a career in civil services? Sir, I was in class twelfth, and uh, there was this speech by Honorable the Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So he said that do not uh, do not dream of becoming something, dream of doing something. And sir, that stuck with me. And sir, I dream um, of a life that is dedicated to the nation, a life of service. and sir i have been associated with with various ngos as you can see in my dad but i have realized that uh, to create an impact you have to be in the administration so that is one thing and sir there are other personal things associated with it with it as well so i have been in uttarakhand i have changed around uh, 13 schools i have lived all over uttarakhand and when i was a little when i was a little kid i, I come from a very privileged background yet i had to walk 2 kilometers down to the bus stop then we used to go to the school and i have seen my friends carrying Uh, uh walking 10 kilometers to the school and while on their way back they carry loads of sticks or grass on their head and sir that really moved me and i think i can change that okay uh, so you said you are a dreamer uh, you want to bring about uh, changes in the country suppose if you are asked to prepare a vision statement or a vision document for india what are be your three to four priorities while preparing the vision uh, document so sir the first and foremost will be the youth of the country because uh, almost 70% of the population of a country is below the age of 35 that is one thing and sir uh, within this uh, youth segment i want to focus more on education so although we have a fine uh, institution of education but i think uh, there are certain changes needed uh, and i think we can uh, supplement it with various other uh, Uh, the models of education that has been given either by swami vivekanand ji who talks about the youth power and about determination and will power so we can include that we can include other things as well so that is uh, the youth is one thing and sir if we talk about uh, second domain it would be economy certainly so i think we have to invest more on agriculture because it is our good point it is a usp of india then i would also focus more on the manufacturing sector and open up it to the market forces extremely sorry open up uh, to the market forces and make sure uh, that it is open up for reforms like uh, we recently had the agricultural reforms but it was taken back so something on that line um then if we talk about another segment it would be defense so i would make sure that there is a military industrial complex then we are uh, indigenizing the defense products then we are investing more and more on uh, manufacturing of the small arms am- ammunition the shells and the artillery guns within india and exporting it to all of the world and sir fourth will be uh, having a greater presence in the international arena that we are doing right now after 2014 there we have seen there has been a significant shift so i would focus more on that so okay. these are the four okay got your point you wanted to say that uh, if the youth are prosperous uh, society will be happy okay and when the society is happy state will uh, propel to prosperity is it this is what uh, you wanted to say there is a concept of skill india do you think that this campaign or this program has failed the youth of our country so i wouldn't uh, exactly say it has failed it but i think there are certain improvements that can be done upon although it was a great program but we have seen that uh, although the youth were skilled but the skilling was not up to the mark and uh, we haven't seen that transformation of that skills into employability and 
money coming in through jobs. You give us two suggestions which you want to recommend to the government for uh, improving uh, the quality of output in the skill development program. So I think first would be we have to focus on new curriculum. So what we are seeing the skill uh, skilling India, it is more focused on be tailoring electricity, electrician and sorts of things like that. If you could uh, move into the computer domain as well, if you could train people into AI and we could even train them into graphic designing or some uh, relating something to the computer to the tally or SQL, my uh, something like that, database management, I think uh, uh, we can create a more okay. skilled labor force. Ansel, uh, I can see that uh, you have opted for certain group B services and you have uh, opted out of certain uh, group B services. Why so? What is the rationale for it? Uh, sir, uh, in fact, I was really confused what services to opt in what manner. So I was thinking about the top three, four or five services, but then I had a talk with my senior. So he's from my college, so he got selected into services. So he told me, uh, he told me that uh, you fill all these services. And you can opt out of those two. And if you have to go for B services, then join your state group B services. That is much better. So while taking decision, you rely more on your friends and peers than uh, by your own own uh, concerns. No, sir. The experience of a senior bureaucrat, oh, uh, a senior, uh, a senior of mine. So I rely more on that. The experience. Right. Thank you. <coughs> Ansul, you belong to Nainital. Uh, tell me uh, about Mandrega in Uttarakhand. What is the condition of or status of Mandrega in Uttarakhand? Sir, I am not uh, privy to the exact technical details of this question. Although I think... Uh, you have not heard about MG Narega? Yes, sir, I have heard about MG Narega, but not in the context of Uttarakhand. What specifically is being done, but I think whatever is being applied to the whole country, I think that is being done. Okay, suppose if you are posted in any Tala as district magistrate, how will you uh, increase uh, women participation in workforce? Women participation. Yes. Sir, the first thing is very basic, you have to invest in education and health, that is one thing. And sir, what else we can do, I think uh, there is huge potential for self-help groups, especially in Denital. In fact, we see, saw one lady, Ms. Rathodi, he, she even recently went to Shark Tank mm -hmm. to brand a mm -hmm. native product called Pisyunun. Mm -hmm. And sir, similarly, there are small industries of candles in Uttarakhand. Then I have been associated with, uh, there is one farm called the Muscotia farm, they sell jaggery tree. Then there is one Hillans uh, self-help group, they make uh, various native products like they made millet uh, that rice cakes and millet cakes and then they also make bedu jam in, in fact uh, honorable the prime minister mr narendra modi in one of his monkey he, al he also talked about this hillans group so i think sir, there's huge potential of S of this SHGs and we are having schemes like lakpati didi etc if we could more focus on this so uh, there would be increase in tremendous amount women ansul uh, uh, you have done a ba that is from central stephens college and you have also been president of Hindi Sahitya Sabha. How come? Uh, sir, I have a soft corner for Hindi. So mm -hmm. growing up, I've always been speaking Hindi and I like to read a few poems. Mm -hmm. And it was also because of my managerial skills. I manage the events quite well. I have good leadership skills. Mm -hmm. So that is why I think the college gave me this opportunity to lead Hindi Sahitya Sabha. So prove that you are very good at Hindi. Just prove here. Kaka gaga anga, cha cha jaja yaan, tata dada na, tata dada na, papa papa maa, yara lava, shasha saik, shatra kyaksha. Okay. And do you remember the Hindi months? Sir, I can try. Posh Mark Fagun, Chaitra Bhashak, Jay Shashar, Shravan Bhatpad, Kartik, Mark Shish, Ashwin. And one more test from Hindi. Do you have any idea about Prastavna? Sir, I think I do have an idea, but I cannot recall it right now. If you could it is preamble so of the constitution. Huh? Do you remember some of the important words in preamble that is in Hindi? Sir, there's this one, there was this one contention, is it Dharam Nirpekshita or Panth Nirpekshita? So when you are talking about secularism, it is more about Panth Nirpekshita. So this is one key difference. Okay. And if I ask you preamble in English, uh, can you highlight some of the important points from preamble? Sir, it talks about first of all where the sovereignty comes from. So the sovereignty comes from we the people of India. Then it talks about justice, liberty, equality. And sir, if, when it talks about uh, freedom of speech and expression, it also talks about the unity and integrity of the country. Mm. So we have to see the, all these things in light of unity and in integrity of the country. Also, uh, recently there is some debate regarding two important words from preamble. What are they? I think uh, one, one ought to be secularism. Mm. We are seeing that debates going on and on. Mm. And then second could be socialism. Socialism. So what is your opinion about that, about that debate? So I think uh, India has had a rich history of secularism as well as socialism. Even if we, if we go back to the ancient times, we had seen that kings 
Uh, uh, whether they should uh, remain in the part of the preamble or should be removed from the preamble? My I think what has been done, it was added in 40 seconds. I think yeah. uh, it has just given voice to what was already here in India. So I think there is no need to remove them. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mr. Ansul, you are from Uttarakhand, right? Yes, sir. Can you please tell me, recently the uh, Legislative Assembly of Uttarakhand has passed one bill uh, regarding UCC, Uniform Civil Code. And the governor uh, has reserved that bill for the consideration of Honorable President of our country, right? Can you please tell me on what ground the governor has reserved the bill when it has been passed by the competent legislature? Why? What could be, what could be you know, going in his mind? I think it is uh, because uh, that particular subject is in the third concurrent list. And does, even the does it happen all the time that whenever any competent state legislature decides to, you know, make uh, provisions in a bill which otherwise come in conflict uh, with uh, somebody which is already in concurrent list and rule or law has already been made on that subject, that in invariably that bill is reserved for the consideration of the president? Does it happen as a matter of uh, uh, rule? Yes, it usually happens because if there is a clash between the central legislative piece and the state legislative piece. What if what if uh, uh, if the, the subject matter is in a concurrent list, but no legislation uh, has been made on that subject matter by uh, the Indian Parliament, and yet uh, the state legislature is legislating on that subject? Can in that uh, scenario uh, be also it will be prudent for the governor to reserve the bill for the consideration of uh, the president? I think, sir, it is indeed prudent because what if some years down the line the central comes up? What with does the constitutional provision say in this regard, sir? It says that if uh, the if it is not reserved for the president, president has not signed in it, and then if the central government decides to come up with the legislation, then the central legislation will prevail over the state legislation. Okay, you have mentioned in your detailed application form that your father has been uh, additional district judge. Can you please uh, tell me uh, what will be the hierarchy of revenue court at a subordinate uh, judicial uh, administration? There are, there are three courts, right? Civil, criminal and revenue. What will be the hierarchy right from bottom to top? So, the revenue courts? Revenue courts, yes. Sir, although it comes more into the administrative domain, so I have like, like very little idea about that. I know much more about civil and criminal. Okay. I think you it is more about Patwari, Tehsildar, then we go up. Yes, yes. That is the hierarchy. Okay. Uh, tell me, uh, when a district judge sits uh, uh, on any case which uh, pertains to uh, any criminal matter, he is called session judge, right? Yes, sir. If, if district judge is sitting in the capacity of session judge and he has decided to award a capital punishment on any accused, yes. so will that capital punishment be unconditionally executed if there is no appeal from any side? No, sir. Uh, regardless of the uh, is there an appeal or not, uh, it has to be. It has to go to the high court. Uh, because it has been mandated by a high court, by a Supreme Court in a ruling. So, it, it, it uh, mandatorily has to go to the High Court if there is a capital punishment involved. Okay. Also, uh, tell me, uh, in India, we have a system of, uh, you know, electoral uh, college, right? Electoral college for uh, election of president of our country. Can you please tell me uh, the composition of uh, the members who all form part of this electoral college? Since you have studied political science. It, be, it has been a while since I brushed up on my Lakshmi Gan, but sir, um, we have uh, the, the members of the parliament. All the members of the parliament are elected or uh, nominated are... Uh, I'm extremely sorry, I'm really confused in okay, this. Okay, no, this is my last question to you. Uh, you know, in uh, India, the judges are selected uh, in a very different manner, right? What uh, harm will it bring if you go for a system wherein judges are elected... Uh, at higher judicial uh, administrative hierarchy? Elected by the parliament? By any constituency, yes. So I think, sir, then it would it could lead into politicization of uh, higher judiciary. As we have seen, uh, it is being done in US, the recent overturning of Roe versus Wade. And, sir, another thing would be then we could see that we could go back to a time when there was super se superseding of judges like we had. Uh, in the ADM after what happened in ADM. So, so, so if you, if you uh, dispense with the system of, uh, you know, uh, collegium system and go for uh, this, you know, uh, election of judges, though we may uh, uh, come and sit over a uh, table and decide about the minimum criteria uh, as eligibility criteria for people to stand in the election. But don't you think this will be more representative and it will go in line with the democratic principles that we, you know, hold close to our chest? In fact, sir, I totally agree with you. There is a need for judicial accountability as well because uh, they need to have, a, they need to, because they sit at a higher office, there is need for accountability. In fact, Mr. Nani Palkiwala, an eminent jurist, he recently passed away. 
so he defended the judiciary in the fourth judge's case against the anjak judgment but in fact he also said that there is a need for change in collegium so if we could go back to the venkatachalya commission report he also suggested a commission for election uh, for appointment and transfer of judges so i think if we could make some changes in the anjak uh, act that was passed and we could tweak it somehow and make it amenable to the Sup honorable supreme court i think we that would be a really great way ahead anshul you are from uttarakhand there is a very famous saying that pahar ka pani and pahar ki jawani pahar ke kaam nahi aati that means the resources of mountains they are not being useful to the mountain people can you tell us about the problem of migration from these regions specifically uttarakhand how deep this problem is and what is its socio cultural impact on the society of uttarakhand so in fact uh there is a very heart wrenching song from pandavas it said didi bhubugyal e matu e pani bigjalu matlab sister this whole land this bugyal and this all water has been sold off mm -hmm. and whatever your ancestor has preserved it is being sold off so sir what are we seeing what is happening in uttarakhand so we have had the last land census in around uh, 1970s 80s so after that there has not been any land census and if we look at the agricultural productivity we are seeing that the agricultural land in uttarakhand especially in the hills it is shrinking little by little and the productivity is also going down and then there is a, a problem of wildlife and human conflict that is there then if we again see that uh, we see that there is dearth of economic opportunities in the hills and that is why people are migrating from the hills to the plains and the migration is also fueled by other factors like lack of education and lack of uh, hospitals in the hills to uh, so sir what we are seeing we are seeing that especially in almora and other hilly districts the decadal growth rate is in negative uh, in almora it was minus 10% uh, in fact if we talk about the per capita gsdp we see that uh, the per capita gsdp of uh, hilly districts like rudraprayag is almost five times less than the gsdp per capita of uh, say states uh, districts like haridwar and dehradun so what we are seeing there is a concentration of development over development in these uh, plain areas that is uh, haridwar udham singh nagar and dehradun because there we have had followed the up model of development we have established huge big factories in sitkul there so that is one problem and sir uh, uh, as i told you that this dearth of lack of opportunities in the hilly areas that is why sir i always support that we need to go more towards the himachal model of development if we could uh, establish uttarakhand as a destination as a destination for tourist as a high as a hotspot of high value tourism if we could fine i understood right. let's move to next question you have shown your interest in literacy campaigns right so suppose as a district collector of a particular district there is a problem of drop out right from the uh, this uh, primary to middle level what steps will you take to ensure that drop out is uh, completely zero okay sir so what we can do is uh, we can rope in the anganwadi workers especially in the villages they'll go to the houses and they'll ask about what is the reason that you're not sending children to the school is it about the infrastructural facilities of the school or are they being employed elsewhere so if there is instances of child labor then i can uh, tell the authorities to stop it like the police thana that etc then we can uh, talk with the bdo and the cdo and come up with a uh, stay with a district specific plan for education so that is the push strategy any pull strategy so i think uh, like we have had the midday meal schemes i think there can be some local level schemes that can be implemented there so if you are up in the hills so we can say that we can give you chara here at school they can take it back for your cows because uh, people go for ash for charas for their cows in villages fine then you have studied political science there is a very famous saying of lenin that politics is concentrated economics what is the meaning of this statement or what he is indicating about i think uh, he must be about, it must be about uh, what uh, politics in its essentiality is just economics so if we talk about the major political ideologies be it capitalism be it socialism or communism we see that at the very heart of the debate there is economics so what happens how the resources are distributed who is uh, who has the concentration of this these resources in this hand and what the workers are doing so i think that is more about it right my last question to you is that in the recently concluded wto ministerial meet can you tell us some of the points which were key concern for india in this summit where india had some kind of stake in it 
some kind of arguments related to WTO where India had some stake. So I think sir the biggest one was regarding the peace clause so and the calculation date of the subsidies because uh, India said that uh, the calculation of subsidies is being done in the dates of 1980s so we have to update it then there is a need for augmenting the peace clause and sir then there were also talks about fishing subsidies uh, fishing subsidies to the developed countries that was another thing and uh, there was also talks on the appellate body because it is not functioning. Mm -hmm. Thank you Anshul. Anshul earlier in the discussion you talked about literacy uh, what is the current literacy rate of India? So okay, no problem. Sorry, so I'm just getting a little confused. No, no problem. Uh, what is the definition of a literate person in India? Who is a literate? That is uh, the person who can uh, do basic numeric numerals and uh, he can read and write. So he is considered. Are you literate. sure? Okay, no problem. Uh, exactly, sir. Uh, although I had mentioned literacy, camera, but it was more about just I was uh, more. Okay, uh, no problem. Uh, talking about uh, the levels of literacy. Uh, can you suggest some of the innovative ways in which uh, literacy at primary levels can be enhanced? Just two to three very uh, bullet points. So first is we have to have literacy at the primary level in mother tongue. <coughs> then if you could rope in local cultures, local folklore. So if you are there in Uttarakhand, so you could teach them in Kumauni or Garhwali. Okay, culture is one part apart from it. And um, I think there is a need for specific training of the nursery primary kids because they do not understand the higher concept so you will have to teach them in uh, playful things like you have to teach them through games through plays something like that okay can you tell me the difference between the icc and icj sir international court of justice it deals more with the civil disputes that arises between member states mm -hmm. that is part of the un whereas icc that is more of an independent body and it it uh, sees more of uh, cases that are on the criminal side like be of a, be it of genocide etc but doesn't deals with the terrorism things that okay. that is an exception uh, and india is party to which of these institutions I think icj icj and not icc uh, so according to you if india is not part of icc uh, can icc pronounce a verdict against uh, a person of uh, indian origin or some uh, functionary from india so although I'm a little confused in this, but I think if the other party is part of the ICC, then they can bring up at a case against India and the ICC can pronounce it. Okay, judgment. ICC functions uh, on the principle of complementarity. You have any idea about this? Okay, no problem. We'll move ahead. Uh, what is Article 371 of the Constitution? So Article 371 of the Constitution talks about giving special privileges to certain states that are that are seen as backward or don't need some protection for cultural things. How many such states are included under uh, the ambit of this article as of now? So I do not know about the exact numbers, but there are quite a few. This Maharashtra, then Kapkut, Gujarat, there was Nagaland, okay. etc. Uh, can you tell me uh, some key differences between the provisions that <coughs> are contained under Article 371 of the Constitution and the 6th Schedule of the Constitution? Some key differences. One, two. Just give me a moment, sir. Please. Thank you, sir. So I think under 371 uh, there was uh, uh, this. Uh, so th there is difference like in the sixth schedule state you have to the first thing is of permissions in the in the 371 they have to I think you have to take permission from either governor and president and this is difference so that is one thing in 371 you have to make something related to autonomous associations. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, my final set of questions to you. You have interest in mountaineering. Uh, can you tell us which is the highest mountain peak that lies completely in the Indian territory? I think that is uh, Nanda Devi. Okay. Uh, is uh, our expeditions and climbing allowed uh, there? Sir, although we can go up to a certain height, but it is not uh, allowed because of certain religious re reasons. Because Nanda Devi is considered a Devi, especially in the hilly areas. Okay, thank you. Anshul, uh, you are from St. Stephen's College. I think only recently in the month of February, if I am not mistaken, the college had suspended 100 students for not participating in the morning assembly and also threatened that unless or until they call their parents, they may not be even permitted to appear for the term examination. Don't you think that uh, this decision of the college is violative of uh, fundamental rights? Yes, indeed, uh, we can say that. Uh, so, what happened the, next, the very next day, the Student Union Society wrote a letter to the principal and he took back that notice. That I am aware, but the very decision of the management, uh, we are de uh, discussing that. Yes, sir. So, don't you think it is a violation of fundamental rights? 
sir if we see what happens in the morning assembly it is more of a secular it is more in secular nature because the religious uh, scriptures that are read out in the morning assembly it is from all the religions we also read from quran we also read from bible we also read from uh, shrimad bhagavad gita so but sir because we have the religious instruction thing that is a separate thing in our college and that happens on a friday and it is only for christian students so i do not think so okay it was like really a violative of the fundamental rights okay one last question before we let you go there is a college across the road hindu college tell me you have also studied hindi isme kitna hai dam so there is this uh, really nice quip that we have so we say to the hindu college people so you your college has one thing that our college doesn't so what is it then we reply that hindu college has the view across the road <laughs> okay thank you very much anshu sure. the interview is over thank you sir thank you sir thanks a lot Can I come in? Yeah, come in. Thank you. Sit down, Anshul. Thank you, sir. When is your interview, Anshul? That's uh, so five days from now, fourteenth. Fourteenth. Okay. This is your first attempt, or what? I said this was my third attempt and my first interview. Third attempt and first interview. Okay. And all along you have been writing with PSIR. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Okay. And you did your graduation uh, with twenty-one. Paul Science and History. Paul Political Science was there. Okay. So how was your experience today with us, uh, sir? Uh, entering and I was uh, quite uh, nervous because I had given my dress for dry cleaning and hadn't returned it to me. So that was one thing I was quite nervous. So that is why I was speaking a tad too fast in the beginning, especially when you asked me why civil service and got a got it a little jumbled up, as to say. Oh, okay. So you see, I'm sure. That first of all, you see, you have to sit properly. Go back. Go back. I mean, no, no, no. There. On there, chair. Rest your shoulder on the the back of the chair. Ha. Huh. It should be like this. Okay, you are sitting uh, on the edge. It should not be there. You should sit like this, and then now you are comfortable. I hope you will go in the proper dress. Yes, sir. I have just a blue suit. Okay, okay. That, that that's all right. You see, you have a lot of advantages. So I don't want you to spoil any of your advantages. You are a young boy, born in two uh, thousand, isn't it? Yes, sir. So very young, and a young boy. You have to, and you have gift of the gab. you could uh, communicate your ideas freely frankly and with confidence not an issue all those qualities are there with you and you appear to be honest also in your submissions whatever you thought you spoke your heart yes. but at times you need not speak through your heart only it has to be a combination of head and heart both isn't it that thing you have to be very uh, conscious of the very first idea i don't know i mean it's natural to you or somebody has taught you when you came entered you said sabon ko sadar padha ji sir isn't it so is is it uh, your own uh, way of greeting people or somebody has told you to no, sir i have like since childhood i was I has been saying pranam to the elders that's all right uh, there's nothing wrong in that but uh, initially it appeared to be slightly dramatic okay okay if it is natural ki sar pranam it is all right nothing wrong uh, in saying if i am making a statement like ki my honorable pranam uh, to the uh, uh, that is like that, that that is that is honestly over statement just be in your natural self just say sir sir good morning if you can't say pranam sir that is also okay that is not an issue But sabhi agrajo ko mera sadar pranam and all that becomes dramatic. <laughs> Avoid using those dramatic languages. Somewhere during discussion, two three uh, sentences you used. Make sure that you don't use such sentences. Coming from a privileged background, still I had to travel and I had to go and all that. Why do you? Nobody has asked you whether you are from a privileged background or not so privileged background. So avoid using such words. so because what happens na no? if you start saying like that somebody may think that this boy is slightly boastful that should be have you have to be <coughs> humble yes your humility should be able to impress the board members and should not be the other way around no streak of boastfulness or arrogance you don't have but the way you speak na no? at times it appears that i could understand that this boy is really very humble boy but there are people who will accept you or test you on your face value so be mindful of those words only thing is mindful of those words that that is very important and then be honest to yourself honest means no compromise with your personal integrity and honesty of purpose has to be there in all your answers 
like just example i am giving you right example of uh, the uh, meaning of literacy again you speak spoke through your heart this literacy has a definition so that definition if you know it's okay reading and writing beyond a certain age that is 7 years or so one who has the ability to read and write and has crossed the age of 7 is a lit considered to be a literate person so that is a meaning of literacy so but you had your own uh, definition of literacy avoid that then a question like prove that you are uh, you have a love for hindi there also you could have uh, said in a much better way like speaking about vyanjan and all varnamala and all that you went like a bullet train i could have recited a poem instead you could have nahi there also ki sir i mean to begin with sir i think in the if you are talking about the varnamala itself so it is it's very difficult to recite from ka to ga yes sir but sir i have picked up that uh, habit so if you allow me i can you take permission from the board member on your own you should not be coming out then talking about the hindi months your thoughts were random you started from pause or something and all that pause is not the beginning of uh, the hindu calendar also it is chatra but pause corresponds with january so that's all right Don't forget about that if it is hindi it is hindi in words and spirits both so you have to say sir the month starts from chatra and about the hindi seasons also somebody may uh, ask you right sir so you said everything you knew everything but how you deliver that is what is important so your humility is very important you don't you can't afford to miss any opportunity because you are almost there you are at the threshold of success isn't it you must have done well in your uh, uh, mains examination which is why you are here and you are capable of getting very good marks also because you are a young boy you can be molded into the nitty gritty of uh, governance uh, with a uh, proper training and all that only thing is you have to show or display your uh, display your humility right. in words and in spirit so be careful about yes, the selection of words and don't try to give an impression that even remotely that this boy is a boastful person so if that happens there is no problem in the uh, while saying you said without thinking said nan as as uh, nan nani palkhe wala who died recently nani palkhe wala died long back oh sorry sir it was mr fali nariman sorry so i'm sorry sir you will not, not be getting uh-huh. second opportunity there once you have spoken it is done uh-huh. damage That's is already right. done so think before you speak that is very important for you isn't it the fali nariman so you think before you speak that is why i am saying that if you are able to curb your uh, thoughts collect your idea just any question is asked try to understand intent of the question and collect your thoughts your ideas then speak right. because you have all the good qualities all ingredients are there you have to prepare a good dish out of that ingredients okay so all the best to you if you have any specific question to ask sir i just i wanted to know what like uh, like for example you asked me a question so what is the time limit i can take to think before it gets to a point sh- it should be uh, not more than 10 seconds 10 seconds is good enough before we start looking at you and staring at you it's time for you to start is there any specific question you think current affairs that can come in the actually you see so you are, you see you are you are from uh, uttarakhand uttarakhand we did not uh, ask too many questions uttarakhand itself is, is a huge uh, issue particularly with respect to climate change and environmental uh, sustainable development Utt- uttarakhand is a very important state whatever has happened in the silkayara tunnel case yes. that is an example and that is a warning also then why despite all these things happening why the government is promoting construction of highways construction of roadways and all that when rail connection is also going to uttarakhand and all that what do you think is, is it a judicial decision or it is like playing havoc with the climate and uh, playing havoc with the lives of the people make a very balanced view you can't be saying this is wrong that is wrong every uh, side has both pros and cons just just wave uh, alternatives of pros and cons that's it otherwise uh, psir so many issues are there constitutional issues are there so read about uh, what about the latest uh, developments which have taken place yes. the judicial decisions and all that recently cash for uh, vote uh, judgment is there so which articles of the constitution so articles of the constitution at least four five important issues if you are able to remember the uh, 
articles, then you will be able to give a better idea. International relations also, so many issues are there. Right, so, uh, PSIR also some questions. So, I'll prepare all the relevant uh, six, seven, eight issues are there. Just prepare and give a very balanced view. Okay. All Thanks a lot, sir.